It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program. Today we're going to talk about faith and how faith works. One of my favorite quotes comes from Smith Wigglesworth, his book, Ever Increasing Faith. He said, anyone can be changed by faith no matter how they may be fettered. The word fettered just simply means bound. That means the enemy cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. In other words, we have faith in God. We have faith in the Word of God. We also have faith in the blood of Jesus and faith in the name of Jesus and faith in the power of God. And we are designed to live by faith. God's plan for our lives is to walk by faith, live by faith, overcome by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 uses the words by faith 20 times. By faith, by faith, by faith in one chapter. In other words, learning how to live by faith is a supernatural way that we as believers live. And we feed our faith on the Word of God. Today's message is a very simple message, yet one of the most powerful messages you'll ever hear. I actually learned these four steps from Kenneth E. Hagin, and we call Dad Hagin. And he said the Lord gave him these four steps from Mark chapter 5 and verse 34, where Jesus told the one that is your blood, he said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. And in that verse right there, Mark chapter 5, verse 34, and actually from 24 down to 34. These verses tell you the four things that this woman did that actually enabled her to receive healing from God. Dad Hagen said the Lord told him, if anybody anywhere will take these four steps, they will always receive not only what they need from God, not only healing, but anything else. He said, if you'll take these four steps, Wow, I wrote that down, went over it for many years. These four steps on how to receive from God. Today, I encourage you to take some notes, pay attention to this message, and I dare you to take some steps of faith and receive the supernatural. Receive healing, but not only healing, anything else. Let's go right into the message. Second Corinthians chapter 9, and here's, here's uh, the promise are the word of God. God's promise, he says, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Do you know that's included in the word? That might be your promise. How many of y'all want to make sure that's not your promise? None of y'all claiming that? He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Anybody want to say, I'm claiming that right now. No, the next part's really good. He said, if you sow bountifully or generously, you'll reap also what? generously. So there's a sowing and then there's what? A harvest, a bountiful, generous harvest. Read the next verse. He says, every person, every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. He says, so let every person give as you purpose in your heart. In other words, your giving must have a promise, but it must also have a purpose. I said, you're giving, you must understand the promise concerning giving because there is a promise. The seed literally is guaranteed that God said he'll literally multiply your seed zone. So your giving must have a promise. Why? Because that's how faith comes. That's where your confidence comes from. When you're tithing, I'll open the windows of heaven. Amen. Pour out a blessing. When you're giving or sowing, he said, I'll multiply your seed zone. So your giving has, number one, a promise. And then number two, he says, it must have a purpose. A purpose or a cause. What is God's righteous cause or what is the purpose of our giving? The purpose of our giving is so the gospel of Christ and the word of God can literally go around the world. Amen. To be a blessing to those that are here, but be a blessing to those watching online. But also, we're going to be a blessing around the world. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you so much that all the families in the earth will be blessed. 
Boy, that's kind of that's kind of amazing, isn't it? He said, "I'm going to bless you, and all the families of the earth will be blessed because you believe God." Amen. 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 So Smith Wigglesworth said, "There's no telling where the blessing will end when somebody believes God." All right, let's try that one more time. He said, "Because you believe God, all the families of the earth." Yeah. Amen. Amen. Did you know when you believe God and have faith in God, there's just no telling where the blessing will end. I said there ain't no telling where the blessing will end. And the devil tries to make it a small thing, but God said it's much bigger than you know. Come on, your giving, your prayers, serving the Lord. He said it'll reach out to all the families of the earth. Amen. The influence. So the, the promise is that God said you're not going to give yourself broke. I know some of you, I saw that look in your eyes that you thought, oh, no, hold on to your wallet, Margaret. They're coming after the money. But God said, you and I are not going to give ourselves broke. He said, you and I will literally give ourselves into increase. Aha, let's try that again. He said, you're not just going to give yourself to where you go broke. He said, literally, God will multiply or there will be a bountiful harvest. Yes. Amen. Amen. There'll be an abundant harvest. So how would you act during giving if you believe God and you said, wow, there is a harvest coming in. I'm just going to give and get happy about it. Don't let the devil lie to me. I'm not going to live in doubt. I'm not going to live in fear of lack. Come on. I'm going to give like God's word is true and he's going to multiply this seed. It's going to come back, press down, shaking together and running over. Did you know I believe that kind of faith and joy actually causes your harvest to come faster. Uh, well, one guy said, I believe this kind of faith and joy will actually fertilize your seed so you'll get a better yield. If you'll yield, you'll get a better yield. Amen. In other words, God will multiply your seed zone, and so you know the word, and that's where faith comes from. F.F. F. Bosworth said it's impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing that you're not sure God is offering. So let's try that one more time. It is impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing that you're not sure God is offering. In other words, you and I must be fully persuaded that it is the will of God. God said, I will do this in your life when you're a tither, when you're a giver. He said, my word is true. It cannot fail. Amen. 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 So years ago, I learned how to take the promises of God in this area. And then when the devil would challenge me, come on, and he will challenge you. The Bible says when you hear the word, immediately he comes to steal that word yes. to try to keep you from acting on it, to try to keep you from receiving it. Because once you receive it, you become a testimony. Yes. Yes. Boy, and a testimony is dangerous. Yes. Let's try that. I said a testimony is dangerous. A testimony comes from someone who has not only heard the word, but received that word, experienced that word, and that testimony can be multiplied thousands of times, just that testimony. Can I get a witness? Do we have any testimonies in here? Come on. Amen. Let me give you an example of just a testimony. Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood. You know the story. Mark chapter 5, verse 24 through 34. First thing, what happened? She heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. But Dad Hagen said the Lord told him, what, is the, what did this woman do? He said she did four things, and he said those four things, he said, is how you can write your own ticket with God. He actually titled that message that is probably 50 years old. You can still find it. How to write your own ticket with God. Woo. Let's try that one more time. How to write your own ticket with God. In other words, God said, I'm going to sign the check and you fill it out. Amen. Yeah. Dad Hagen said over 50 years, he said a lot of people get mad about just the title of that message. He said, but that's what the Lord said to him. He said, if anybody anywhere will do these four things, they will always receive not only what they want or need from God. Come on. They'll not only receive healing, but whatever they want or need from God. Amen. Amen. Anybody remember that story? And so Jesus is talking to him and he said, write on the piece of paper, anybody that will take these four steps, come on, or put these principles in motion. 
Now, the reason he said four steps are four principles because when it comes to four steps, the promise concerning healing already activated. We heard that last night from Pastor David. All you got to do is receive it. But the promise concerning prosperity involves a principle and a process. In other words, there is a sowing and then there is a reaping or there's a harvest. In other words, you don't just believe you receive it. You can pray, but it takes time from the sowing into the harvest. And it's during that time that the devil wants to say something to you about it. Yeah, yeah. What happens? Sometimes he don't even wait till you leave the service. Yeah, that's right. And he'll say things like this. He'll say to me, he used the way he would challenge me because uh, he would say, I'd actually position myself to where I had to have a harvest. Yeah. So he would say to me, He'd say to my mind, what are you going to do if that given don't work? What's he trying to do? Doubt. What else? Fear. Come on. Because my daddy always taught us to tithe, and my daddy always said you can tithe on what you make or you can tithe on what you want to make. So I've been a tither from, since I was just a kid. My daddy actually figured it for me, and apparently some people need someone to figure it for them. They can't figure 10%, I'm sure. But anyway, the tithe, come on now. Then my daddy says you can tithe on what you want to make. So just as a teenager, I started double tithing. Yes. I double tithe. Amen. People say, well, that's not necessary. Yeah, but I wanted the harvest off of that. Yes. Amen. Right? Then I heard Dad Hagen when I was probably about 17, 18, and he started talking about a guy that triple tithe. So when Trent and I first got married, we agreed that we would be triple tithers. And we only made $100 a week at that time. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty big influence on your check every week. <laughs> Man, my hands would break out in the sweat. And then Aaron came along when Aaron was born, and we didn't have no health insurance. We didn't have, man, and came along, and we had started making 150 a week by the time Aaron came along. And so we were giving 50 a week away. Y'all getting real quiet in here. <laughs> and so we give 50 a week away, and Aaron came along, we thought, there better be a God. Amen. In other words, there is a God. What happened? We had to prove it. This is one area God said, prove me. In other words, God's saying, I double dog dare you to prove me that if you'll tithe and you'll give offerings, I will open the windows of heaven upon your life. I believe that's not only financial, I believe that's spiritual. All right, let's try that again. I said, I believe that's not only financial, I believe it's also spiritual. In other words, your generosity does not just affect your finances. It affects the way you receive spiritually. Now, here's the way Dad Hagen said it. He said, uh, Bruce Black asked him, Pastor Bruce in, in uh, Atlanta area, he's asked him, he said, Dad Hagen, if there's one quality you'd look for in a leader, what would it be that you'd look for? And he said, Dad Hagen didn't even blink his eyes, and he said, generous. I mean, he didn't say something like, be sure they don't smoke. No, now he's talking about a leader in the ministry. What's the one thing you would look for? And he said, Dad Hagen, first word he said is generous. He said, because a man who is not generous will shut down the move of God. Well, let's try that one more time. He said, because someone who is not generous will actually hinder the move of God in your life and ministry. Someone who's not generous. In other words, your generosity doesn't just affect your finances. It affects the way you receive everything from God. Amen. Example, Acts chapter 10, a man by the name of Carnelius. Y'all ever heard Acts chapter 10? Yeah. Carnelius, what did Carnelius do? Boy, y'all getting quiet, I think, turned into a Presbyterian <laughs> church, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I heard Dad Hagen say one time because he was taking up an offering for Raymer or something. And, uh, and he said, somebody said, boy, it sure got quiet in here. And another guy said, boy, the spirit was really moving until you started talking about giving. <laughs> Dad Hagen said, yeah, the spirit. He said, that was a stingy spirit, and I killed that stingy spirit. He said, now we're fixing to have a generous spirit in here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you can't get happy about giving, you shouldn't be running and flipping about nothing else, right? So, so Carnelius, <laughs> Carnelius, what happened to Carnelius? Acts chapter 10. It says that his generous giving and his spiritual hunger, his prayers, got God's attention, and he wasn't even a Christian. 
Yes. All right, let's try this out of this real quiet in that section over here. What, what got God's attention? He's hungry for God, so he's praying, but also what is he? He must be an extraordinary generous giver because his generosity came right up before God. And God said, we're going to have to do something at Carnegie's house. You say, what happened? Man, angels started moving. Did you know your generosity will get angels moving in your behalf? Angels started moving. Come on now. Anybody know what else happened? He sent Peter over there to his house, got Carnegie's and his whole family filled with the Holy Ghost. You say, what happened? His generosity translated into a revival in his house. All right, let's try that again. Come on, some of you say, well, I'm praying for my kids. Why don't you be generous and God will do something in them because of your generosity? In other words, he said, your generosity will affect your children and your grandchildren. Amen? And so in that area, your generosity, so he's talking about being generous. So he said this, the Lord told him, he said, write these four things down. He said, because anybody anywhere that will take these four steps or will activate these four principles will always receive whatever they want or need from God, not only healing, but anything else. Do you think I listened to that? When I was 17, man, I said, What? Jesus said, let me get my pen out. Jesus said, if anybody, anywhere. Boy, y'all are getting quiet now. I guess I'm going to have to stick with this a little while. Jesus said, if anybody, come on, all of us act like we're some exception to the rule. Or we think of where we live is an exception to the rule. But did you know after I preached for Carnelius in Papua New Guinea, man, we were giving and giving and giving. And did you know he turned around, a man without electricity and running water, and he started wiring $400 a month to MHM to help us preach in Vietnam and Nepal. No running water. Come on. No electricity. And he said, we want to be partners. You ought to see the results, man. God has broken the whole spirit of poverty off of them and the blessing of the Lord hitting their little town. Come on. All their people. Amen. Anybody want to know? Come on. What's the four things? Do you want to know? He said, well, what's the four things that woman did? Well, Dad Hagen said, what's the first thing she did? And Dad Hagen said, she heard of Jesus. And, and he said, the Lord said to him, said, no, that's wrong. He said, that's not the first thing she did. That's what somebody else did. I want to know the first thing she did after she heard of Jesus. All right, let's try that one more time. Because it's what you do after you hear the word that determines what you receive, not just when you receive the word. What's the first thing she did after she heard the word? Uh, Dad Hagen said, I don't have a clue. Jesus said the first thing she did after she heard of Jesus is she said, she said, she said. In other words, she brought her words into agreement with the word of the Lord. And she said, all I got to do is touch a hem of his garment, and I know I shall be healed. Come on now. Twelve years of misery, but all I need is one touch. Don't need an appointment. Don't need an introduction. Don't need him to sign my Bible. All I need is one touch. Come on now. I just need one touch. She said. What well, second thing she did? He said, well, she acted or she did something. So it's not enough just to talk and, and sit on the couch. She acted on the word. She acted on what she was saying, and she started moving. How many know that when you start tithing and giving, what are you doing? I'm acting on that word. Amen? So she acted. What's the third thing she did? The third thing is when she got to the crowd, pressed through the crowd, she touched and she received the anointing. Wow, think about that. Receiving the anointing or receiving the power of God or receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, you'll have a chance to decide if you're going to receive the anointing or not. Or if you're going to be curious or you're going to be entertained or you're going to be a spectator. That woman said, I'm not a spectator. I'm not just curious. I'm not just getting entertained. I'm receiving from the Lord tonight, boy. And she pressed through there and she received the anointing. And when she received it, she felt in her body. 
Did you know the anointing is tangible? I feel it right now. Yes, ma'am. I feel like slapping somebody and I hadn't even got started tonight. I said, I feel the anointing right now. It is tangible. To me, it feels like electricity going all over me right now. The anointing, what is that? That anointing destroys every yoke, lifts every burden. There's healing power in that anointing. Come on, that anointing. She received the anointing. Hallelujah. Uh huh. Now, after she received it, what's the fourth thing she did? The fourth thing is she told it. Now, that one woman, she told it, experienced the power of Jesus, and her life was changed. Her body was changed. But when she told it, I bet you there's millions of people, come on, in the last 2,000 years that God healed. Read Mark chapter 5, verse 24 through 34. When she told it, man, the experience of what faith did in her life, experience of what Jesus had done in her life, boy. Amen. In other words, once you experience the word working in your life and you prove it working in your life, then when you start telling it, you become a threat to everybody that says that may not work in Louisiana, that may not work for you, that may not work in your house. But once you start telling it, say, I'm proof right here. I got the proof right here. I got the proof right here. Come on now. Well, you ought to get happy already. I got the proof right here. Praise the Lord. Amen. The moment you act on that word, come on, you act on that word, if anybody anywhere. Y'all still with me here? Now, here's a very interesting part of this. So he said, Lord Jesus, can I ask you a question before you leave? He said, that woman pressed through the crowd, and that woman got healed, and she knew geographically where you were, and she pressed through the crowd to touch you. So he said, how does that work today? And Jesus smiled and said, it's even easier today. He said, but because when I was raised from the dead, I extended my dominion and domain to everywhere. He said, so now anybody can touch me anywhere, anytime, can make contact with me. Come on, just by faith in his name and faith in his word. Right now, come on, you can just touch him right now. The pain in your body will leave. Come on now. But the same promise of God, that when Jesus told that woman, daughter, your faith made you whole. Amen. Come on, this flies in the face of every preacher that says, oh, sovereignly, God is sovereign, and it's all up to God. If you got it or you don't got it, it's just up to God. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, God did not sovereignly choose you. You chose to believe God, and your faith made you whole. So don't act like God has sovereignly picked you out to be a loser. Come on now. Or to be broke. Come on now. Or to be sick. Come on now. Or to be defeated. Come on. God has sovereignly chosen to give you his word. And if you'll act on his word, your faith, come on now, will make you whole. Your faith will make you whole. And when Jesus turned to that woman and said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Dad Hagen said when he read that, he said the Lord told him if her faith made her whole, then your faith will make you whole. Let's try that one more time. If her faith made her whole, your faith will make you whole. If her faith made her whole, Your faith will make you whole. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Let's go over that one more time. Jesus said, go in peace. What does that mean? Don't be upset. Don't be disturbed. Don't be frustrated. Don't be worried that that condition is going to come back on you again. Go in peace. Don't don't be upset about it. Come on now. Say, oh, wonder if it's going to come back. He said, no, go in peace and be whole of your plague. What he's saying is the same faith that made you whole will keep you whole. I think we ought to try that one more time. I said the same faith, come on, the same steps of faith that you acted upon that made you whole will keep you whole. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. The simplest definition of faith is to act like the Bible is true. The moment you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. 
Come on. So regardless of where life is pushing you and the pressures you may feel, I still believe. And after I believe, I speak. Come on, you need to hear your pastor's voice and you need to hear what the Lord is telling you tonight. But your situation needs to hear your voice. Do you want to have faith that gets results? Order the four CD set, The Winning Combination, and the books, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, and Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. Your gift of $30 or more will help Mark and Trenna train pastors around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I trust you enjoyed the message today. It's one of my favorite messages and changed my life many, many years ago. One of the most powerful passages of Scripture is the one with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, verse 24 through 34, where Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. In other words, he said it wasn't just God sovereignly choosing, it was her faith that made her whole. And those four steps, number one, she said it. Number two, she acted or she did it. Number three, she received the power of God. Number four, she testified or she told it. Those four steps, of course, I learned from Dad Hagen. He said the Lord told him, if anybody anywhere will take these four steps or put these four principles in operation, they will always receive not only healing, but anything they want or need from God. Not only healing, anything else. In other words, faith works the same in every area of life. So I encourage you to write these four steps down, go over it, encourage you to get the messages and listen to them again and again. And thank God for His Word. We're learning how to live by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So God bless you, and I'll see you again next time. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today. We want to thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries. For more information, visit the website at markhankins.org or call us at 318-767-2001. Thank you for watching.